All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition here of Monday Night Raw. How are y'all doing? My name is Dominic, of course, behind the commentary table, and we are live and sold out hot, hot, hot off the heels of an immense King of the Ring pay-per-view event here in Denver, Colorado, as Rey Mysterio is set for action. If you haven't seen that King of the Ring pay-per-view, I highly recommend you do. A lot of interesting matchups, a lot of shocking outcomes, and a lot of talking points following that night. However, one outcome that Rey Mysterio is not particularly satisfied with was the outcome of Tommaso Ciampa versus Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. And as you can see, Rey Mysterio is coming out here without a United States title because he did not leave the King of the Ring pay-per-view with the United States Championship. Instead, it was a hard-fought matchup, but Tommaso Ciampa proved once again that he can defeat Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio lost his United States Championship to Tommaso Ciampa, and you gotta think that Rey Mysterio, he wants to be put right back into that championship picture, but one way that he can catch the eye of King Booker, one way that he can put himself back up onto that pedestal as saying, hey, I deserve a matchup for the United States title, is if he can defeat that man, Dolph Ziggler, another very impressive competitor. Okay, he's put on some tremendous performances. However, one thing Rey Mysterio and Dolph Ziggler both have in common, at least over the past few months, is that they have suffered a lot of losses here on Monday Night Raw. Sure, Rey Mysterio, he won the United States Championship. Sure, he was able to defeat Adam Cole at SummerSlam to win that title, but in the end, both Ziggler and Rey Mysterio have both been, in their minds, overlooked and very beatable. Tonight, we're going to see as the bell rings which one will leave here with a victory, a rare victory for both men. And now here we go, the living legend Rey Mysterio and the always impressive Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler an incredible mat wrestler, as well as a bit of a high flyer when he wants to be. Okay, he's a jack of all trades. Some would say a master of none as Rey Mysterio bounces off the ropes. Oh, leaps over. Oh, and catches him there. Picture perfect. Slam down onto the mat. One, two. No, and only a two count. Picture perfect indeed. However, that picture did not involve the United States Championship. As Dolph Ziggler, he wants to be put into that United States title hunt. He wants to be put into a match against Tommaso Ciampa for that championship. As Rey Mysterio now... Oh! Springboard Moonsault beautifully executed there. And the cover now. One, two, no, and only a two count. Rey Mysterio, okay, I was saying before, Dolph Ziggler, a jack of all trades, a master of none. Rey Mysterio, you can say, has absolutely mastered those ropes, has absolutely mastered his footwork. Okay, the educated feet of Rey Mysterio has taken a lot of courses, whether it be in the course of kicks or whether it be in a class of ropes. Rey Mysterio knows how to bounce off of them, picture perfect, he never slips. And something tells me Dolph Ziggler, he's going to have to figure out a way to make Rey Mysterio slip up. Oh! Or perhaps just get picked up there before slammed into the mat. One, two, and no, and only a two count there. Dolph Ziggler, big slam, but Rey Mysterio gets the feet up, gets the shoulder up before using those educated feet of Rey Mysterio, hitting him with the Insiguri. Now he looks to fly. Off the top, beautifully executed there with the leg drop. One, two, no, and only a two count. A leg drop, not even Hulk Hogan perhaps could replicate. However, something tells me Rey Mysterio, he can't be thinking about Hulk Hogan. He's got to be thinking about Dolph Ziggler as he goes after the legs. But there you see Dolph Ziggler, incredible control, incredible technical game. Oh, with that elbow right to the shoulder before the famous are there. Wrestles him to the mat there. Okay, leaps up and connects one, two. No, and only a two count. However, that's the strategy Dolph Ziggler has to have. He has to keep Rey Mysterio on the ground. He cannot 
let him fly in the air. He cannot let him reach those ropes as now Dolph Ziggler looks to put the finishing sequence in effect with the super kick. But Rey Mysterio counters. However, Dolph Ziggler, quick as a cat, gets the punches in. Now he couldn't hit him with the boot. Instead, he hits him with the fist. However, Rey Mysterio striking back there with those incredible forearm strikes and now he's feeling a bit cocky perhaps however Dolph Ziggler he ain't having it right now he goes for another cutter position but Rey Mysterio counters pushes him off and then here we go Rey Mysterio he's gonna have to use his speed advantage in order to defeat Dolph Ziggler Dolph Ziggler he's gonna have to make sure that he can control the pace of this matchup because if Rey Mysterio controls it he will be going at a mile a minute and right now oh wait a second Dolph Ziggler he ain't looking so good Rey Mysterio catches the kick Bounces him off the ropes. Seems to have something in mind. Oh, but Dolph Ziggler stopping himself dead in his tracks there. Beautifully executed into the clothesline. The leaping clothesline before leaping up into the air and driving his sharp elbow into the chest of Rey Mysterio. Trying to cave it in. However, Rey Mysterio, he gets up and he's looking to fight back here. Following the Insiguri attempt. Ziggler counters. Rey Mysterio counters that one. Kicks him in the gut. And then, oh! Spins around. One, two. No, and only a two count. Wait a second. One, two, three. No, and Rey Mysterio somehow pushes Dolph Ziggler off at the last possible moment. However, now Rey Mysterio, wait a second. He has him on the ropes. Okay, I mentioned earlier, Rey Mysterio. Oh, a master of the ropes. Using it to his advantage with that 619. Flies off of him. Connects with the frog splash. And the cover by Mysterio now. One, two, three. And this one's over. Rey Mysterio. And Dolph Ziggler. Okay, high-paced fight between both men. However, in the end, it was the 619. The always devastating 619 that put away Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler. Okay, I said it before, Rey Mysterio was going to have to be kept away from those ropes in order for Dolph Ziggler to successfully defeat Rey Mysterio. However, when Dolph Ziggler was propped onto the middle rope, you knew it was over because Rey Mysterio once again used his expertise of the high-flying antics with those ropes, with the 619, with the splash, and then it was over. And as Rey Mysterio celebrates a victory following his loss at King of the Ring, I want to turn your attention to something else that happened at the King of the Ring pay-per-view, and it was between AJ Styles and Finn Balor. AJ Styles came out here and attacked Brock Lesnar, hitting him with a steel chair, causing a disqualification, helping Finn Balor retain his championship. Why did he do it? AJ Styles will explain his actions later on tonight. However, speaking of the club members like Finn Balor, like potentially AJ Styles, I can only assume with that too sweet, the club will be in action. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson in our main event of the evening will be taking on the revival in what some would call a tag team dream matchup. However, right now, we're not talking about tag team action. We're talking about women's action as Dakota Kai is set to take on Nia Jax, the new Raw Women's Champion, Nia Jax, who won the vacated strap at King of the Ring, defeating Kyrie Sane in order to take home the belt. And right now, Dakota Kai is looking to get a bit of revenge, a bit of redemption on Nia Jax, because you see, it was a number one contender's fatal four-way matchup between Dakota Kai, Tony Storm, Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax. Those four women brawled until they could not brawl anymore, and Nia Jax ended up becoming the number one contender to face Kyrie Sane for that championship on her shoulder at King of the Ring. You know what happened, however, within the confines of that matchup, Dakota Kai was pinned by Nia Jax. Tonight, Dakota Kai knows that the only reason Nia Jax is champion is due to the domino effect. And of course, the thing that really toppled over those dominoes was the event in which Dakota Kai was pinned by Nia Jax. Right now, Dakota Kai looks to get some revenge. Dakota Kai looks to say, hey, you know what? You might have pinned me on that fatal four-way, but I feel as though I should be able to compete as the next potential challenger for that Raw Women's Championship. Dakota Kai and Nia Jax about to battle right now in what is set to be a hell of a fight. 
Okay, Nia Jax, obviously, in most situations, including this one, has these power and size advantage. And Dakota Kai realizes that immediately runs in with the kicks, with the strikes. And here we go, that captain of team kick taking down the current Raw Women's Champion. Goes for the cover, but no, not even a one count there as Nia Jax kicks out before she gets a kick right to the back. Goes after Dakota Kai. However, Dakota Kai's smart strategy uses her small stature in comparison to the champion to move out of the way. And oh my god, Nia Jax. However, oh my god. Using that raw power, using that strength and the ability to absolutely dismantle Dakota Kai. Okay, effortlessly lifting Dakota Kai into the air before sending her crashing into the mat. However, now it's Nia Jax who gets sent into the mat with these kicks by Dakota Kai. But Jax gets up and oh my god, like a freight train runs over Dakota Kai. However, Dakota Kai gets up trying to fight back, but Nia Jax stops her dead in her tracks there. And then, oh my god, like a brick wall. Dakota Kai goes running into Nia Jax. Jesus, just getting slammed into the mat. And now she's not done as, oh God. Nia Jax incredibly devastating as Kyrie Sane realizes, as Asuka realizes she's still injured, the former Raw Women's Champion. However, the current champion absolutely dismantling and showing off that raw power, showing off that ability to defeat anybody. However, perhaps you can't defeat Dakota Kai right now. One, two, roll of victory, but no. Okay, the victory for Dakota Kai, she could practically taste it. However, right now, it's Nia Jax who's tasting these forearm strikes, these kicks by Dakota Kai, and there you see another running forearm strike into the corner, takes down Jax, and Jax is not looking good, and Dakota Kai realizes it, setting it up, picture perfect frog splash, one, two, no, and only a two count. Flying into the air, following that impressive running forearm strike, okay, trying to fight back, absolutely doing her best to outmaneuver and to outstrike Nia Jax, because she realizes the second Nia Jax gains control, it is incredibly difficult for her to lose it, and right now Dakota Kai is doing a great job keeping and maintaining that control in this one, she cannot let Nia Jax gain one ounce of energy, one ounce of breathing room, because the moment she catches her breath, it's going to be Dakota Kai who catches a fist, catches a slam, catches, oh my my god, the sheer size of Nia Jax in the corner there, catching her there. And now Dakota Kai gets up trying to fight back. She has to battle through the pain. But when you're battling against Nia Jax, some would say that all you feel is pain. As now, oh god. And there you see the champion. Oh my god, come on. Okay, Dakota Kai is putting up a hell of a fight. But geez, there you see Nia Jax just catching her there and then laughing. Laughing at her punishment on Dakota Kai. However, Nia Jax, she might be getting a bit over cocky as Dakota Kai tries to fight back, but she can't fight back out of that one. And then, oh my god, the leg drop. The leg drop there by Jax. One, two, no, and Dakota Kai gets the shoulder up. She somehow gets the shoulder up, and there you see Nia Jax. She's saying, fine, you know what? You want to kick out? Well, then how about you get up? As right now, wait a second, it seems as though Dakota Kai gets out of that predicament, but Nia Jax catches her there, catches the leg, catches the kick. Oh god, before Dakota Kai gets met with that Samoan drop, always devastating, crunching into the mat. And now the cover there by Jax, one, two, three, and this one's over, the Raw Women's Champion. Proving why she is the champion, okay? Pinning Dakota Kai in that fatal four-way last week on the last edition of Monday Night Raw. And tonight she did it again in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. But you gotta admit, Dakota Kai, she tried her damnedest, hitting her with everything, every kick, every strike, every high-flying maneuver in her arsenal. But in the end, Nia Jax, she caught her. She caught Dakota Kai who went to the well one too many times with that kick right to the stomach and then was met with a Samoan drop and now wait a se wait a second Well Nia Jax there you see Celebrating the victory and it seems as though Another woman in that fatal four-way matchup Tony Storm 
And oh gosh, he's on the apron. Staring at the champion. Oh, enters the ring with the irresistible force herself. And now Nia Jax, perhaps not taking Tony Storm seriously as Storm walks up to her. Both women staring each other down now. And now Nia Jax, oh, wait a second, gets a slap to the face, and here we go. After a matchup between herself and Dakota Kai, Nia Jax is being pummeled now by Tony Storm. Oh, God, but then one clubbing forearm strike leads into a headbutt there, and Tony Storm, my God, I don't know why she's out here, but it seems as though Tony Storm, she's trying to attack. She's trying to attack the champion, but the champion, Nia Jax, is absolutely pummeling. Tony Storm right now, Harvest Storm strikes back, throws her into the corner, and here we go with these punches. Okay, I mentioned it before, both of these women in that Fatal 4-Way, but there you see, just like at the end of that Fatal 4-Way, Nia Jax is standing tall, crushing her into the corner, and Tony Storm, she's trying to get up now. Okay, as Jax goes for a punch, but Tony Storm strikes back, and here we go, with a few strikes once again, and then throws the champion over the top rope there. And there you see her, Tony Storm, feeling the adrenaline rush as she just threw the champion Nia Jax to the outside, and Nia Jax, oh wait a second, deciding, you know what, this is a fight set for another day perhaps, as Tony Storm gets, gets the one up, on Nia Jax, sending her to the outside, crashing to the ground. And now it seems as though Nia Jax is not having it anymore. Tony Storm gets a one-up on the champion. The following message has been brought to you by the club. Finn Balor watches as this mysterious figure picks him up and... Wait, what the- what the hell? Wait a second, lady- what?! Oh my god! Th did AJ Styles just join the club?! Well, there you have it, AJ Styles confirming that he is indeed now a part of this, of the club with Lou Gallows, Carl Anderson, and the Universal Champion himself, Finn Balor, AJ Styles, saying that he doesn't need anybody's respect, he doesn't need anybody in his corner, because he's got those three men, his, quote, best friends in this company. However, speaking of friendships, let's talk about Sin Cara, who is clearly coming out here and a whole new look. Okay, one half of the, or should I say, formerly, 
known as one half of the Lucha Dragons alongside Kalisto Sin Cara a few weeks ago attacked Kalisto in the middle of the ring following their tag team championship loss okay they weren't defending it they were looking to take those raw tag team titles from Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish but instead Sin Cara and Kalisto lost and afterwards Sin Cara decided to attack him here as he's looking to bring some punishment over to Tony Zinzinski, a new up-and-comer here on Monday Night Raw. This is his big break. This is his big debut here on Raw. He's looking to make the best of it against Sin Cara, this new Sin Cara. He looks very different. I will admit that. Okay, trying to become a whole new person, perhaps following his, his breakup with the Lucha Dragons. Right now, Sin Cara, he's reinvented himself, and he's looking to reinvent the wheel in terms of singles competition on Monday Night Raw. As now he goes after Tony, however, Tony strikes back as Zinzinski, here we go, trying to fight back here against Sin Cara. Sin Cara, oh my god. However, you can see it right now, going after him with the hard strikes, the aggressive nature by Sin Cara here tonight, as he's going up against this young man, from Italy. Okay, Zinziski, he has been working, oh, for many years in Italy. He's got some hard strikes and a lot of heart, and I'll admit that. However, Sin Cara, he doesn't care about heart. He's looking to rip that heart out of the chest of Zinziski right now following that neckbreaker. However, Tony, he gets up, goes for a running strike. But there you see Sin Cara strikes back with his own, moves out of the way into that belly-to-back suplex, crashing down to the mat does Tony. As now Tony, here we go, looks to lift him up, suplex position, but instead he gets a knee right to the top of the head, and then a chop to the chest for good measure, and here we go, the quick strikes there by Sin Cara as he lifts him up, oh my god, that suplex stunner combination, beautifully executed, one, two, three, and this one's over. Okay, Tony Zinsinski very quickly losing to Sin Cara, and I will admit, Sin Cara, okay, you would think that he would come out here with a very different strategy. But there you see with a devastating maneuver like that, introducing that new move in his arsenal. Sin Cara has reinvented himself all right since the breakup with Kalisto. Why did he do it? We still have no idea. However, we know this Sin Cara has decided to reinvent himself due to the breakup of this great tag team. And speaking of the Lucha Dragons, there you see it's Kalisto who's decided to come out here. Okay, both former Lucha Dragons staring each other down. Now, Kalisto, I'm not entirely sure what he's saying to Sin Cara. Both men staring each other down, and Sin Cara getting right up in the face, getting right up close and personal with Kalisto. As now, oh, wait a second. Sin Cara picks him up. Oh my god, into that suplex stunner combination. Once again, taking down Kalisto. And it seems as though he's once again reiterating that he is incredibly done with this faction. He is finished with Kalisto as his tag team partner. And there you see Kalisto. Okay, we still haven't gotten an answer as to why Sin Cara broke up with Kalisto. Why that tag team is now over. However, speaking of massive factions, huge tag teams here on Monday Night Raw, the leader of the Undisputed Era, the king of the ring, Adam Cole, next week is going to be telling us all who he will compete against at Survivor Series. Okay, he won the King of the Ring tournament, that means at Survivor Series he'll be able to face either WWE or Universal Champion, and we're going to find out that. However, speaking of championships, let's talk about the United States title, as next week it has been confirmed. Rey Mysterio, after defeating Dolph Ziggler earlier on, went up to General Manager King Booker, and he asked for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He wanted his championship rematch, and he's going to be getting it next week. Tommaso Ciampa is looking to defend his title against Rey Mysterio. Will he be able to defeat him again? Or Well, well there's only one way to find out, and that's by watching next week's show. However, right now, it is your main event of the evening. It is some tag team action as Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson of the club are set to face off against the Revival. Okay, it seems as though Gallows and Anderson decided to come out here all on their lonesome. Okay, they feel as though they should 
win a matchup on their own without Finn Balor, without AJ Styles. They want to prove that they are a dominant tag team here on Monday Night Raw. However, it's not going to be easy because they are going to be going up against The Revival. Two teams that are very different, but some would argue are the best WWE has to offer. Okay, they bring very different ideals to tag team wrestling. Okay, because the Revival, of course, they come in with a very similar style, constantly on the same wavelength and wanting to dismantle their opponents, whether it be the club, whether it be the Undisputed Era, whether it be the War Raiders, whoever. The Revival come into this one, come into a tag team matchup with very similar styles, whereas Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson enter the ring with very different styles. Okay, they contrast each other in that respect, in the confines of the squared circle, you've got Luke Gallows, this raw powerhouse, and you've got Carl Anderson, this very quick and technical competitor. Whereas the Revival, they come into this one both incredibly technical, no flips, just fists. They do not care about any athletic ability. They care about dismantling their opponents. They care about making sure that their opponents leave not being able to stand. They work over people like Luke Gallows or Carl Anderson. They work over their tag team opponents. And right now, they're going to have to do that against the club. Will it be the powerful and speedy combination of Gallows and Anderson? Or will it be the technical and all around on the same page revival? Here we go. Main event of the evening. Tag team matchup underway. As Scott Dawson immediately, there you see, in my opinion, has the technical ability to outclass Luke Gallows right now going after the arm going after the limbs that's what the revival love to do they go after the limbs of their opponents but now it seems though Luke Gallows using that power to power out of that hold going after the arm of Scott Dawson but Scott Dawson strikes back oh picks him up and takes him down there beautifully executed drops him on his back one no and only a one count Okay, a lot of hot action we've seen here tonight. Dakota Kai taking on Nia Jax. Rey Mysterio taking on Dolph Ziggler. San Cara taking on Tony Zinzinski. But right now in this main event, very different from all those different types of matches. This is a tag team matchup. And it's going to be hard hitting as you see right now. Scott Dawson working over the leg of Luke Gallows. However, Gallows catches the leg of Scott Dawson, goes for a right hand, but instead he gets a boot right to the stomach. And now, oh, wait a second. Here you go. Here you go. Scott Dawson. Here we go. Going after the ankle, going after the leg. And this is the strategy that the Revival bring. Okay, they're constantly on the same wavelength because they constantly have a very similar strategy. Whenever they enter the ring, they go after the limbs. They go after the legs in particular. Because they understand that if you can't stand, you can't fight. And Luke Gallows, he is a big man. Okay, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And if he goes to stand up, well, then he might just be put in a predicament where he just falls down hard with that DDT there. Tripping during the run towards Dash Wilder. Wilder quick on his toes, quick on his feet. Hits him with the DDT, catching him there before throwing him across the ring and then tripping the big man down. As now once again, here you see the Revival's, oh, intense strategy of going after the legs of their opponents and Luke Gallows is not looking too good. Okay, the legs of Luke Gallows, definitely a target. And there you see expert tag team strategy. Okay, it's not pretty, but it sure as hell is effective as the Revival. Here we go with that textbook offense. Okay, using the ropes to their advantage, bouncing Luke Gallows off of him and then into a back suplex. But now it's Luke Gallows who's trying to strike back. And there you see Scott Dawson expertly, expertly rolling in between Gallows and Anderson so that Gallows has to go through him to make the tag. And right now, it's Gallows who gets dropped on the top of his head with that brain buster. Okay, this is the main event here on Monday Night Raw. I cannot reiterate, that means that this is a very important matchup. When you are in the main event of Monday Night Raw, you know for a fact that everybody is watching. And they are looking to see which man, woman, or team is better in the main event picture. As right now, both of these teams know that Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, they do not particularly have any tag team championship contenders right now. Okay, everybody feels very 
much on the same playing field. So both these teams are looking to prove why they are so impressive. As now once again, textbook, oh, revival again. Okay, both of these teams know that if they were to win this main event matchup, then, then they know that they would have the attention of General Manager. And oh my god, what the hell? General Manager of King Booker as now Scott Dawson seemed to be going after the legs of Luke Gallows. But Gallows very quick to move out of the way. And there you see, takes him down, makes the tag. And here we go. Carl Anderson running in with the back suplex. Anderson, oh god, there you see, taking him down there. Okay, he makes the tag, and now he's feeling hot right now. However, it seems as though Scott Dawson takes him down, looks to cool down Carl Anderson. Now, of course, neither of these teams particularly plays to the crowd very much. Oh my god, neither team are, you would say, fan favorites. There's not only a one count. However, you can't deny that both of these teams are two of the best teams in professional wrestling right now, and the revival. Oh my god, are not looking good as Carl Anderson hits Scott Dawson with that neckbreaker. Trying to gain control for the club who have not really had any amount of control within this one. Okay, it's been all revival, but Carl Anderson following the tag. Oh my god, he's been going after both men like a one-man wrecking crew. As Carl Anderson takes down Scott Dawson. Oh my god, Scott Dawson once again. Tries to sneak, going after the knees. Oh my god, but instead, Carl Anderson moves out of the way. Into the cutter there, the Anderson cutter too. No, and only a two count there. The Anderson cutter by Carl. However, it didn't get the job done. As Scott Dawson, oh my god, he just gets up. Scott Dawson just gets up. And here we go, goes for a cover now. One, two. No, and only a two count. Trying to get the quick victory, trying to get the roll up pin on Carl Anderson, but Anderson kicks out, and here we go, oh my god, this time, this time Scott Dawson connects, goes after the knee of Anderson, and then Gallows gets taken down there by Dawson, as there you see Dash Wilder gets up on the apron, Dawson going after Gallows with those punches, however, he wasn't paying attention to Carl Anderson, or perhaps he was, as he gets out of the suplex predicament, but he can't get out of that one with the shot right to the face by Anderson. As now, oh, wait a second, he throws him over the ropes. And now here we go, suplex predicament there. Oh god, and then a punch right to the face by Scott Dawson. And now Dawson, he lifts up Anderson. He seems to have something to mind. Okay, he realizes that Gallows is down, and Anderson, oh god, this is a terrible predicament for him, Shatter Machine! The Shatter Machine connects, and the chances of the club winning this matchup have just been shattered, or perhaps not! As Carl Anderson, sure, he's incredibly fresh in this one, but I thought he was done. Okay, that Shatter Machine, oh my god! Is a typical match ender, but it didn't end this one, not just yet. As Carl Anderson connects with that super kick, Gallows gets up, and then, oh, wait a second, Dash Wilder goes for those running knees, but now Carl Anderson trying to gain control, but he just couldn't, as Dash Wilder right now throws him into the corner. Oh, God, I think he just realized the mistake as Lou Gallows. Lou Gallows runs in. Oh, my God, what a boot right to the side of the head, and he's not done there with a punch right to the face of Scott Dawson as Dash Wilder now, oh my god, gets slammed into the mat realizing that he just made a perhaps fatal error. Following the splash of the big man onto the stomach too. No, and only a two count. Okay, he threw Carl Anderson into the corner of the club. I don't think he realized that Luke Gallows was there because Luke Gallows made the tag and then Dash Wilder, you could feel the tension building within him. As now, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, here we go, tag team offense, beautiful, beautifully executed there by Anderson and Gallows, as Anderson, he's, oh god, he's feeling a bit cocky, however the cockiness might just come back to bite him, as Dash Wilder makes the hot tag, and here we go, Scott Dawson runs in, 
However, Carl Anderson, he tries to fight back now and then. Speaking of running there, hits him there with the running rocket kick. Blasting off and perhaps about to blast off into victory as he throws Scott Dawson into the corner. And now, oh, wait a second. Wait a second here. Carl Anderson has him up and Luke Gallows, oh my God. Both men taking him down. And the cover now on Scott Dawson, one. Two, Dash Wilder gets up. Oh, God, but he just couldn't make it in time. And there you see him, the club, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson closing out Monday Night Raw with an impressive victory over the Revival. Okay, there you see that Shatter Machine earlier on. I thought that could have been over. I thought that could have ended this matchup, but instead it was... The turn of the tide as Carl Anderson kicked out. He was thrown into the corner. Okay, it was one fatal mistake. One mistake by Dash Wilder led to the victory for Anderson and Gallows. Okay, Dash Wilder throwing him into just the wrong corner. The wrong corner. Not realizing, not realizing Luke Gallows was standing there ready to make the tag. He tagged in and then it was all club from there. Gallows and Anderson, there you see the winners here tonight. And they are looking to close out Monday Night Raw with that victory. Ladies and gentlemen, th thank you very much. Uh, 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 hold on a second. Well, I was about to thank you all for watching. I was about to close out the show. However, it seems as though Brock Lesnar is in the building. Brock Lesnar is here. I mean, of course, Brock Lesnar, he was the challenger for Finn Balor's Universal Championship before AJ Styles came out and attacked Lesnar, leading to a DQ. Finn Balor still the champion. However, it looks like Brock Lesnar, he is still pissed off and angry as the Beast is here tonight. And it seems as though he's about to unleash on the club as Gallows and Anderson stare him down. He's trying to think of what to do, and Anderson runs in. And oh God, wait a second. Anderson goes to run in, and there you see Lesnar catching him into the F5! F5 taking down Carl Anderson, but Luke Gallows looking to make him pay for it, has him in the corner there with these hard shots. And now, oh, wait a second, Brock Lesnar, oh my god, actually getting his ass kicked right now, you could say, by Luke Gallows. As Gallows picks him up, he goes to, oh, goes to slam him down. However, there you see Brock Lesnar counters, and now the Beast. The Beast, here comes the pain, Gallows. Oh, gets taken down with the F5 landing. Landing on Carl Anderson. There you see the carcasses of Gallows and Anderson down on the ground. And Brock Lesnar sending a message to the club, sending a message to Monday Night Raw to close out the show with a duo of F5s. Thank you all so much. For watching this one as Gallows and Anderson are laid waste by Lesnar's fury.